Hello, kind friends and companions. I have a trip that I'm gonna be leaving on and I'm hoping to have a dress done in time for said trip. I've got about a week, so let's get to it. My game plan here is to use these curtains as the fabric for said dress and ah, that means it is time for it to finally come down. I am really excited about it because that means that you can see this little piece I cut away here. It's gonna match perfectly the coat that I made in the last video. Abby and I agreed, I'll link to her channel below in case you haven't seen it, but we decided that we would make this dress together so we can do like a fun twinsies thing. And she finished hers months ago and I, I have a week left to make it happen. So let's, we're gonna go for it as quickly as we can. I do kind of have a like a goals list because I, I, wanna, I wanna set myself up for success as much as possible. The lowest, like the very first thing that I wanna get done and is the most important to get done is gonna be the skirt. That way I can wear it with the, the lovely coat over here. <laughs> and I think that'll look really nice. If I can get the skirt done and have some extra time, I am then gonna go for the little like peplum top situation here. You can kinda of see it here. I might add straps, we'll see. And if I get that done, the final bottom tier stretch goal is gonna be getting the chiffon like shirt that goes with the look. So I'm actually not even sure that I have enough fabric to do all of the things, which is part of why I'm like, okay, if I can't get everything, what's the like most important element to get? So skirt first, we'll see what we have left for everything else. So first thing is going to be cutting out all of our different pattern pieces here, although actually, before I get too far ahead of myself, Abby did include a bunch of like instruction alterations for this based on her own experience and like tips and tricks that'll help make it a lot easier. So I should actually open that up first. So this is a reproduction of a 1918 pattern. So it's including all of the things that might have been originally not quite right with that original pattern are just, it's just reproduced, right? So it hasn't been pattern tested. She found some odd issues and kind of wrote up notes on things I should keep in mind, including some, hello. Hey. I have cut out all of the pattern pieces and I was debating on a scale of one to town, how, how necessary is it that I actually do a mock-up for this one? underbodice because the shoulders were really fucking weird on me. Okay, like, watch out for shoulders. <laughs> like you can just honestly pin those pieces together where they're supposed to be and throw it on your mannequin to see how it sits. All right, thank you, much appreciated. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wait a second, I'm supposed to be working on the skirt. Abby, you ensorcelled me. Okay, skirt. First things first, I need to just see if I can even fit the skirt pieces onto the fabric. Do I need to do any piecing because some are too wide? Anything like that. Let's go ahead and get that knowledge out of the way now. Also just verify how much space do I have left over after I've laid out all the skirt pieces. Now this pattern, because it is a vintage reproduction, it is size bust 36. That's it. That's the only size it comes in. So that is not going to quite work for me. So we need to double check that the waist and various other measurements are going to fit on me. So I might need to also do a tiny bit of a pattern adjusting, but it shouldn't be too much. Now for the skirts, we actually have a couple different, actually three different options. So there's just a plain long skirt. There's that skirt with a tunic overskirt, kind of like a kerchief style with the point. And then there's one that's that same one, but like with an extra tucked bunch area at the hips to help create, you know, hip volume. I, I do like the idea of the kind of double skirt look, but I don't really have a fabric in mind for that. And if I'm honest with myself, I think I'll get a lot more like daily wear out of this. I love my green wool circle skirt that I made in the circle video. I wear that all the time. And I just, I feel like this is gonna be more my speed. So I have just realized that I'm a little bit silly. I kind of forgot about the whole velvet has a nap, it has a direction <laughs> and cut my fabric pieces as if it doesn't. Eh but the pile on this velvet is so like sticky uppy. It doesn't actually have that 
strong of a direction. And I've tried looking at where the seams would meet in like several different lights. I put it on the table and kind of, you know, rotate it around it. And I, I don't think it's going to bother me enough to worry about recutting this piece. That said, however, I do feel like even though I added an inch to both of these pieces to help make it, you know, fit me because the, the waist was going to be a little too small otherwise, I think that the skirt is just not as, as full as I would like it to be. If we remember back to my circle skirt experiments from earlier this year, this feels like it's like a quarter circle skirt and that's, that's not enough circle for me. So I am very, very strongly considering because I only cut open one of my two curtains. I have enough fabric that I think I can get away with doing a third panel here just to help make it a little bit more full. And I think that's gonna make me happier. So it is floor length, you can't see, but it is touching the floor ever so lightly. So uh, it's definitely not too short. And then next up, I'm gonna sew all of the different side seams here. And after that, I'm supposed to attach an interior waist stay, which is also what the sheer shirt layer attaches to. But I think that instead, I'm gonna change it up a little bit and I would really love to be able to wear this as a separate skirt all on its own. I think it's a really pretty color and will go with stuff a little bit more uh, flexibly, interchangeably, if it's a separate rather than a, you know, integral piece that's married to that sheer top. So that is my game plan. We'll see if it bites me. So that took me about a million years longer than I thought it would. I ended up deciding to recut that center back piece just because I felt like I'd rather fix it now since I have the fabric anyway, rather than regret it later and then not have the fabric and have a skirt that I'm unhappy with. So I figured just in case I'll go ahead and recut that panel that way the the pile matches all the way around. So that is good. Unfortunately, the fabric is just fray prone enough that I decided it was probably in my best interest to go ahead and bind the seam allowances. That took most of the time that I had this afternoon. Although I did also spend a little bit of time figuring out how I wanted the waistband to go. So I have this really lovely ribbon here that would be a fantastic strength layer but I was trying to figure out how I wanted to implement it for the waistband. So I tried covering it in different ways and figuring out how I might stitch the skirt on. And I think what I've settled on is this one, wherein you have the waistband fully visible on the inside, but that wouldn't matter. And kind of supporting that upper edge of the skirt that you have here. And it makes kind of like a an invisible waistband like the skirt just ends at the top which I think is kind of a cool look it's very Victorian and I know this isn't like late Edwardian post Edwardian but that's okay it's fine I really love doing little tests like these with the scraps it just gives you such good information especially when you can use the actual material and see how it behaves before you end up sewing on your actual project and finding out that what you had in mind doesn't quite work so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do this style of waistband on the skirt top and then maybe i'll look at hemming it little update i have stitched in the waistband here and now i've also added in the hook part of a hook and eye and then a little trick I like to do is I put a pin in just temporarily so that I can get the placement right. I think this is about right then I can use the bar of the pin. Make sure you use a sturdy pin if you do this and I can hook the hook in there to kind of get a sense of is this where it needs to be? Do I need to move it around a little bit at all? And I think this is about right. Looks skirtly. I have already made so many mistakes with this skirt. It's kind of ridiculous. I had intended the opening to actually be like kind of side front. And I thought that I would add a little pocket. I started preparing the pocket and then I realized that I had accidentally mixed things up and I made the opening back here after I'd sewn on the waistband. And I thought about undoing it and I was like, uh, but I'm, nope. I just, 
I've already taken so long at this, I need to just keep on moving on and it's it doesn't really make a difference it's back here. But I do feel like this is a, a more awkward spot for a pocket. I did already cut the material for it, so maybe I'll toss that pocket back here, but we'll see. For right now though, I at least need to get to functional skirt, which we're kind of there. I'm gonna sew on some bars. I might, I usually like to do at least two bars. That way I can kind of have some size variation. You know, if I put one bar here and then another bar here on days where I want it a little tighter or a little looser, I have some options. That's also really nice when you're doing historical stuff because depending on what sort of corset and chemise and you know, all the layers that you're wearing underneath, that can affect how much room your skirt needs to be able to accommodate. So I'll go ahead and get a couple bars stitched in. And then next I need to finally tackle that hem that I mentioned before. I have finished up my hem. I decided that instead of going with my original plan of a double turned hem, I, I just wasn't loving the look of having top stitching visible on top of the velvet, just wasn't my jam. So I decided that I would go with this sort of trim braid that I stitched on to the seam allowance with the machine. Then I flipped it over and hand tacked down the, the top edge of this trim, top from this point of view. And I think that worked really, really beautifully. Like I can see the stitches if I'm really hunting it for it, but that's the nice thing about velvet is that you can kind of grab that under layer and then you can't see it through the pile, which is really, really nice. So skirt done. Now we need to look at the over bodice. Now on the original outfit, the over bodice and the shirt are attached to each other. The over bodice has points that are just sewn on to the, that shirt layer. And I would rather have it as separates. So that means I need to figure out a solution for holding up the, the points of the over bodice. I thought about doing something kind of interesting and clever with like magnets or something, but I decided, no, I'm, I'm gonna try and go very practical. And I think it would be really, really cute to have really narrow straps with ties at the top. Narrow straps alone would probably be fine. It would give off some really good, like Wicked Lady from Sailor Moon vibes. But I, I think ties would be so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some long, thin, narrow straps of velvet that I can then stitch to the bodice. I'm gonna line it with some of this thin black material just to help give it a little bit more structure than only hemming the edge. I'll probably go for a bag lined construction. So I will stitch the side seams together on the black and the velvet layers and then stitch the whole top line of it together so that I can turn it inside out and that's a bag lining. I'm gonna try and cut this black lining just a little tiny smidge smaller than the outer velvet layer. So that way, whenever I turn it right side out, the black layer should help pull the velvet just a little bit towards the inside, hopefully meaning that there won't be any black visible at the neckline edges. Once I got everything stitched together and flipped right side out, I couldn't resist giving it a very quick try on and I think it is looking so dang cute. I think that maybe the ties are a little bit on the long side, but we'll see. I'll wait until the whole thing's done before I decide if I wanna cut them down a little shorter. But for now, I have that done. The tubes, by the way, I use this little, it's kind of like a sturdy straw and a metal stick. I got it from a fabric store somewhere. It's specifically for turning tubes. If I can find something similar, I'll try and link it down below. But yeah, it was really handy having something to help kind of give it structure as I'm trying to turn that tube. There's lots of different methods, but this one is what I happen to have. Now that I have the shirt part done, the, the top part, I also made a little peplum skirting that's gonna go about here-ish. And we now need to combine them together along with the belt piece, which I've also backed with a bit of uh, interfacing to help make it a little bit sturdier, a little stronger. So yeah, time for some assembly. I added a lot of gathering stitches, both to the top as well as the top of the peplum. So that way, once I do have things kind of lined up, you know, the center front is where the center front is for all the different pieces, I can then pull those gathering threads where I need them so that everything matches up nicely. 
once I had everything all nicely lined up and gathered somewhat to the correct same length, I could stitch them together and then I topped them with that belt piece. I hand stitched that in place just using little whip stitches to kind of keep the gathers exactly as they are, as well as give them a really firm base with that belt to hold on to. And then at the end of each of the belts, I had all these leftover threads from the gathering part. I went ahead and tucked those inside rather than just cutting them off because I don't want to have a bunch of loose gathered threads coming undone. So I, I figured I would just kind of sew them inside the belt so that they're nice and tucked away and secured and aren't gonna come undone. But now that that is done, I have a nice finished little vesty thing. <laughs> so let's, let's try it on. Yeah, I think these strings might be too long, but again, I'm gonna wait until the very end before I decide that it's time to cut them off or something. Okay, so let's see. The peplum doesn't actually go all the way around. It only goes part way, and then the this part of the peplum overlaps it so that it doesn't matter, like, and you're not doubling up on extra bulk in the front. I've not yet done any of the closures, which as per usual with me these days. I'm gonna go ahead and just toss a pin in to kind of get the vibe of, of what it looks like. It's a look. Okay, the long strings are actually kind of cute. I think I'm gonna keep them. The top is very strange. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm used to tops that have this kind of form factor being a little bit more up and a little uh, like covering more, but it's not, the, it's not meant to cover. It's supposed to be like an extension of the skirt with a like whole sheer top portion that comes with it. I don't actually know that I've mentioned this yet, but the, the whole thing that inspired the, the, you know, wanting to make this dress was this really cool, uh, like teal blue dinner dress. I'll insert a picture here. Abby and I were chatting about how cool it was. It was just a really interesting combination of velvet and chiffon and, you know, it's a cool dress. And we both thought like, hmm, but what if it was red? <laughs> and the pattern that I'm using is quite similar in, not, it's not exactly the same, but there's very similar elements. And so we thought that would be fun. And uh, yeah, I, hmm, <laughs> I'm just really not sure about this. All right, you know what? After having another look at the original, I was I was really super unsure about these, but it also has quite a lot of like looseness in there. And I, I also took a second to scroll through my kind of late 19 teens gallery of dresses. And it it actually seems like a lot of them have kind of like a, you know, belted, but then loose, above that sort of silhouette. So while I think that to my eye, it seems really odd, it does kind of seem to match the aesthetic of the time. So at least I can appreciate that because my dress here has this uh, crisscrossy, you know, V-neck, I can kind of get an idea of what that would look like with this top with a, you know, something that matched in a better color. But like, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not convinced, but you know what? It's it's a dress that is looking like what it's supposed to look like. I just, I'm not sure that I like what it's supposed to look like. That's okay. For right now though, we are going to truck ahead because might as well. And I think, I'm really, really hoping that once I have the shirt layer on underneath this to help kind of visually fill in the, like the looseness, the drapiness, that is supposed to be there. Hopefully that'll help make it kind of fit the overall look. My, my modern sensibilities really, really want to take in this like underarm section, but I'm going to do my best to leave it because it looks like it's part of the look. All right, let's, let's just not fuss with this for right now. It's fine. We'll move on and we'll work on making the shirt layer. 
So you guys might recall that I had started messing with the shirt pattern before, but looking back at the original inspiration piece, I think I actually might want to do something different. And you know what, Abby, I'm, I'm sorry. If you're watching this, I don't think we're going to be twinsies anymore. We're going to be more like cousins at best, but that's okay. <laughs> It'll make it more fun that way. So I like the fact that the original here doesn't have any seams at the top of the, the arm or the sleeve. It's, um, it's actually kind of like a, the, the super easy tea tunic style style where, you know, it, the, the pattern is shaped like the letter T, the capital letter T with the arms out and a body piece. And there's just a scene that goes from the underside of the arm down the torso. For my shirt fabric, I'm going to be using this very lovely, interesting sort of sheer knit shenanigans. I don't, it's got an interesting metallic sheen. I picked it up from a thrift store many years ago thinking that it would be a very lovely wicked lady shirt uh, again from Sailor Moon. Like this is, this is kind of going to be a very subtle wicked lady cosplay, but like don't tell anybody. I've always thought that this had such a really pretty sheer effect. And I like that with the original, it's actually not just one sheer piece of shirt fabric, it's multiple layers built up so that when it gets to the kind of over the, the chest part, it's not sheer anymore. It's relatively opaque but you get the effect of the sheerness because the sleeves end at different lengths. I feel like this is gonna work well. Well, I feel like it's gonna be a nightmare to sew, but I feel like it's gonna work well as an end product. Like, cause it is very, very pretty. Hello, it is now a week and a half later and I am now on a very, very big boat in somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And tonight is the night that I am supposed to be twinning cousining with Abby wearing this dress or like was this one component of said dress. I have just a smidge more work to do. So I added a hook to the front. This is all askew, but just imagine the place where it overlaps in the front here. I've added a hook and eye, but I think I want to actually add one more to the inside where this flap is in order to help it stop flapping. So we're going to do that, um, maybe even a couple more like snaps to the front here so that the bottom half stays nice and cinched. Uh, unfortunately, we already have repairs to do because remember when I sewed these, these corner bits with the, the straps, I sewed it, flipped it inside out, looked beautiful. And then I clipped the seam allowances. I think I clipped them too much because on the both of the back pieces, they have started fraying out like this. I think I didn't leave enough of it inside the strap itself. So I am going to seam rip this, stick it further inside and sew it back up. I've got about three hours to finish up what I wanna finish up here. Shirt is done, we're down to one hour left. So I need to do my hair next. I should have set it last night by, you know, getting it wet and putting it into a bunch of little sponge rollers, but I didn't. So we are going to have to try and heat set it, which is not something I've really done much of before, but you know, first time for everything. So we're gonna see if I can kind of roll each like little section like I normally would with a wet set and then like pin it while it's cooling and then unpin all of it after like 10 minutes when it's full, everything's fully cooled and maybe get something vaguely of a similar result. So let's give it a try. For each of these sections, I'm trying to go for approximately the same amount that I would if I was using any other like wet set style method. Now that my hair is done and the top is completely repaired and finished, ready to go, I can finally put all the components of this outfit on together for the very first time. I do seriously need to make a new corset at some point so that it's less visible under dresses like this. But for right now, we're going to forge ahead with what we have on hand. And now let's go find Abby. Getting 
to see both of the dresses together in person was so fun. I could see what parts of the outfits were nearly identical versus what each of us had altered a little bit from the original. It was also super fun to compare notes like this gapping in the front and the different skirt variations we picked, how the fabric we used changed the drape and the feel. It, it was just super, super neat. Would recommend. I'm also pleased in general with the overall effect of my outfit. It's quite unlike any other dresses that I've worn or made before. It really honestly took me a moment to adjust to that 19 teens fashionable silhouette that the pattern was aiming for, but I think that once everything is all together, it's super cute, and I already have some big ideas on how I would improve it before I wear it again, like maybe adding a little tiny strap holder so that the shoulder ties stay up, and maybe adjusting the length of the sheer oversleeves just a little bit. I think that'll make it hang nicer, as well as maybe altering the angle of the center front neckline here, just some tiny stuff. I'm really glad that I decided to make this as separate. Some of the construction might have been easier if I had done it all as one dress together, but I'm really excited and looking forward to trying out all the different separate pieces with the rest of my clothing. And I have a jacket that matches it perfectly. Each of these can be worn on their own with other things. It'll be fun to give it a try. Shout out to Nicole for grabbing some photos and shout out to all of you for watching.